is this thing on? Hey everyone, it's Michelle. In case you don't remember me, um, you've reached my channel, Farm Girl. And I know it's been like an epically long time and this whole video, um, I'm going to be riding the struggle bus trying to um, get back on track. But um, I actually went back and looked last year. I slipped in a retreat video, but it was the same thing. I did a video in January and I didn't do another one until May. But um, it's just the nature of this time of year. It's really busy for me. Um, and I've had an exceptionally busy year. So just to recap, um, life events since my last video, the first of the year, which I went back and watched and I made some stupid comment about um, the weather being really mild. <gasps> oh, I feel like personally responsible for all the crap that's happened in Minnesota and the Midwest. Um, obviously, I mean, the weather took a big toll on us in the midst of the weather. We started our kidding season. I had, um, I thought I slimmed down. I didn't really feel like it when kidding season started. It's last year I freshened 22 do freshened means that, um, they kidded, had babies. Um, it's, we were in the dairy industry. It's refers to refreshing, um, or replenishing their milk supply. So it's called freshening. Um, so last year I freshened, I think it was 22 does and this year, just 15, um, which may seem like a lot, but I have two breeds and, um, and three of them actually freshened when I wasn't even here. So I was out of town for the weekend, um, which was very stressful for my family, but yeah, it's been, it's been, it was the worst kidding season I've ever had. I always knew because my kidding seasons have been very easy and I watch my friends and like every year is a nail biter for me. And, um, I like sympathize and lament with my friends when they have just struggles and lose favorite does. And that happened to me this year. So, um, I think all in all, and I'm going to do just quick rundown because I take it very personally when I lose animals. Um, I feel like my management is pretty up to snuff and, um, I really watch my animals, um, for signs of illness or whatever. And so I think that that really limits the amount of illness that I have. So for kidding season, I've, I've never lost more than one kid a season and not even every season. Like I just don't, um, I lost a kid once to E. coli. I lost a little Nubian doe kid to um, pneumonia at a couple months old. I lo I had one, uh, the first year ever that we kidded, we lost one kid. He was still born. We don't know why he died. We had another one that was um, a buck kid that was a Nubian that was born with um, some birth defects and he didn't live. And um, I think that was it. So that's four in 10 years. This is our 10th kidding year. And this year I lost four. We, um, we had one that, and I lost a doe too. And I don't typically lose does during kidding. Last year was actually my first year and I didn't lose her. I had to put her down, um, just with some things that I thought that weren't, she wasn't going to get any better. And this year I lost my beloved Chloe. I'm going to try really hard <laughs> not to cry through this. Um, and she had triplets and we lost one of her kids. And, um, so, and that was the first doe that kidded. And that was like, boom, uh, when that happens, that just kind of really throws you for a loop. And, um, okay. She also, um, kidded, she was our first doe to kid and she kidded on a day that, um, it was negative. I believe it was negative 15 below, um, typically that's, that's not the average temperature in February. I do a lot of Instagram stories. So if you're on Instagram and you'd like to follow me, um, I do. Um, so I, it may seem like I'm absent here, but I get a, about a thousand people on average that watch my Instagram stories. So you know what I've been up to. Um, and you've seen everything that's gone on with my kidding season. So it probably doesn't feel like I've been gone that long, but um, so out of the first 10 kids that were born, six of them had frostbite to their ears and had like swollen ears. Everybody turned out to be fine. And even the first doe kid, um, who had frostbite, she's actually doing great. Um, a little bit of, um, damage done to her ears, but she's mostly recovered, which is pretty amazing considering how cold it was when she was born. So that was Chloe's daughter. Um, then we had another doe that was born with a cleft palate that we had to put down 
And then I went to an amazing retreat. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I knew it wasn't a good idea, but I wanted to go so badly. Um, I went anyways. And so I went to Stitch Nanigans. I had a wonderful time. I met so many beautiful people. And um, that was really the enticement for me is that I really wanted to go and meet uh, Diana and Cassie and see a lot of my friends and um, and a lot of the other floss tubers that were there. I'm not even going to try and name them off the top of my head because I will fail miserably and leave someone out. But it was just um, a super good time, but it was probably one of my most stressful times ever. We had like Oh, flight delays trying to get out of Minnesota and canceled flights then a seven hour six hour delay and um during it was a blizzard I couldn't get to the airport I actually followed a snowplow out of town and the snowplow got stuck on the hill um uh, that should have been my first sign um my husband dropped me off at the airport finally got there got a call from my son that one of our Nubians had kitted um far from the house and just like dropped the kid didn't know what she was doing and the kid was very cold and he brought it in and that was fine then I said come pick me up because when one kids they all kid my husband said no 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 you go have a good time and you know as expected two more kitted and we actually lost two babies um they also had some birth defects um I've only had Nubians have these kind of birth defects but it was still like incredibly devastating and stressful and I just wanted to get home so um it was an amazingly good time McKenna puts on a mean retreat and it was in a fantastic location and I was really happy to be in Arizona in like 75 to 85 degree weather while there was a blizzard going on at home but to leave my family it was stuck with and the, the dairy goats I should mention the goats are mine so my family helps me with them but this is my gig um it's not their jam so I try not to burden them with too much of it because that'd be kind of unfair so it's not a family venture really it's it's my thing so um yeah so a little bit of guilt there and then came home the um last doe was expected to kid and she just did kid with twins and they're perfectly happy and healthy and all of my other kids are doing great right now we've actually have already started weaning some and um sorry if you hear noises in the background I have Sophie here and um yeah so things are going great now I feel like I'm getting into a groove I missed the first goat show of the season already because we have so many projects going on around here um, I just finished like the most amazing bathroom remodel and um, it's my dream bathroom. It's nothing special. It's just the way that I wanted it and I'm pretty handy. Like I put um, Wayne's coating and stuff in our hallway, but just to have somebody to be able to come and do it and rip, like I can't rip out a tub. Like that's not, I can put it in the toilet, but I can't rip out a tub. So to have someone come in and do that, and this was a huge project. It took them a month to do our um, bathroom and our entryway, and we had some custom cabinetry built and a bench built, and it's like, it's it's been life-changing. We still don't have the vanity in, so maybe I'll show pictures or something when um, it's all complete, but it's like, it is now the most beautiful room in the house, so... Um, I hosted a retreat, and Priscilla and Chelsea, and... Uh, Lisa Kindred Stitcher and Lori Textilist and Kim from Canada were all here in the midst of um, my construction. So I, sorry about the dog. So I thank you for not um, judging me by that mess. And currently we have, um, our basement is being dug up right now to put in um, some drain tile and my backyard is being dug up. Uh, they've been here twice to try and put on, um, to do some work on the gutters. And the weather gets in the way, so they're coming back on Thursday. And what else? Oh, and uh, we have a shop remodel. So our barn is going to now be, um, or our what is our shop now is going to be turned into our barn. Our barn is probably going to be torn down, not this year. And then we have a room attached to our garage that's going to turn into my husband's shop. And we have a bunch of rewiring and money is flying out of here. 
So, um, yeah, there's that. Oh, and um, I got ordained and actually married one of my um, oldest and best friends. So that was amazing. Um, I don't know. I turned 46. I had a kid that turned 18. Uh, we finally got her registered for college. She's going to be going to Winona. Um, undecided about her major. She thought she was going to be a physics, a high school physics teacher. Now she's unsure. She works at a vet clinic, so she thought maybe uh, veterinary medicine. So she's just going to go in as a uh, biology major for her first year because it all runs together and hopefully she'll be able to make a decision. Um, I don't have, I, what I really wanted to do is, um, I'm just so far behind at this point. I don't even know how to start. Um, so I'm probably rambling on and on and on. And, um, so I do owe you a retreat video. I'll be honest. I have not, I've watched very little television, floss tube, anything. I feel very out of the loop. Um, I almost never go on Facebook anymore. And um, if I go on, I actually set a timer on my Instagram so that when I hit 35 minutes a day, it would alert me because I needed to find more time somewhere and it almost never alerts me. And I looked and my average time on Instagram was 22 minutes a day. So that, and, and I don't go on Facebook. And so that's pretty much the time I've been dedicating to social media. And, um, it was a well needed break and I've had some even drama in there between, um, I had someone complain on a video from two years ago, like really, um, cause I say, um, too much. So this is going to be a hot mess. So if you're expecting a, a well put together, floss tuber this is not your channel but i did participate in mania so i thought i was just going to get my mania stuff together because i'm towards the tail end of that and honestly i'm burned out on starting things um which i'll explain why and um so i'm just gonna go through that and once i get that out of the way maybe it'll make um getting caught up on some other things a little bit easier and then i'm also going to try really hard not to do any ed editing um so, I have a stack of goodies. Um, I don't even know how many I actually did. I just kind of um, started pulling stuff. And some of it, to be honest, is kind of boring. And I hate showing you things with like five stitches in it. But I know I'm so sick of people telling, saying, if you don't like haul, everybody loves haul. Because how do you know what you want to stitch next if you don't see haul? So stop saying it. So I'm going to even show you just, I only have a few things that have just a couple stitches. So I'm going to run over those super quick. So this is, um, this was a limited edition. It's called Forget Me Not Sampler um, by Brenda Gervais. And here it is. I've seen a few people on Instagram that have been working on this as well. And it's super cute. I haven't gotten much done. It's a smaller pattern though, so it shouldn't take much. So that was my, um, one of my mania starts. These are in no particular order. And this was one of my early starts. So, um, I might post a picture here of Deb's finish. I'm pretty sure she brought the same one when we went to Needlework Galleria. We met Nikki in person. She's lovely. And we bought these little kits because these are the kind of things that we decided we wanted to get just like little finishing kits that came with kind of everything and fun things. And she finished hers and it's super cute and I'm totally riding the struggle bus with mine. So here it is. It's called Garden Time, T-Y-M-E, sewing bag. It's adorable. And I have pulled this out like three times because I feel like... When I'm doing mania, I'm kind of rushing because you're a maniac, maniac, and you're stitching like you've never stitched before. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know people are like that. I don't get it. But, um, so yeah, see that? That is not centered and there's a mistake in there. So I need to rip that out. And it was probably the third time. 
I had to frog on this one, so I set it aside. But, um, so I'll post Deb's finish here. <laughs> Deb also finished this next one, and her finish is super cute. We also bought this at the Galleria together, and um, so here it is. And I'll post, um, I'll put Deb's finish in here too because it's super, super cute. And so I got the stitching done. I mean, that was a day project. It's super cute. And I just never got around to finishing it. And to be honest, mine was, so this is, um, and these were just adorable. So it's Sybil's Scissoress. And I'm sorry, my Fingernails, I literally got done just planting a tree and I did not wear gloves. So if you see dirt, it's gardening season. Um, Sybil Scissor Rest. And it came with a bobbin and it came with all the finishing things. I am going to swap out the buttons. Um, but everything else is super adorable. And But my bobbin was super musty smelling. So I, had to, I soaked everything in bleach because I couldn't take it anymore. And I bleached my bobbin pretty good. But it's that or have that musty smell, which I couldn't take. So I'm okay with it. And um, this was supposed to be a mania start. I actually started this at um, Stitch Manigans in Arizona. Um, but they're so cute. This was, by the way, first ever retreat finish right here. I don't care if it's this small. It's an accomplishment. Um, so this is Falling Star Primitives and Independence Day. And I just think that these are super adorable. Sophie. And I'm stitching this on some 32 count Legacy. Picture this plus. That was gifted to me by Marcy. And so I did finish this one. How cute is that? And then I started the next one. Cute. Um, I'm really into patriotic stitching right now. And I'll show you what I'm doing afterwards. And, okay, so this, these were some of my first starts. I started these at Retreat. Um, it's amazing, quite frankly, that I got this much done. This is a heartstring sampler. I think this is a club kit. Uh, a thankful life chair arm pink pin keep. Why do I feel like this is like spring? There's different seasons now. I think there was another one that was, um, a club kit as well. That's patriotic. Um, oh yeah, and Michelle Garrett, I think she finished that one last year. Um, so that's super cute, and that's all I got done on that. And just using whatever came with the kit. And another club kit, and these are dying to stitch club kits, I believe. Um, this is a Plum Street sampler, Grace on the love this. Yeah, I love everything Paulette does. And then um that's all I got done on that one. I love that they um, send everything, floss, fabric, everything, and also a needle. So I have a dedicated needle for those projects. I appreciate that. Another, oh, oh I think, um, so for Mania, I cheated. And pretty much everything that I started were club kits. Um, which, frankly, I thought that was brilliant. Because then I don't have to feel guilty about having all these projects because these projects are dedicated anyways, right? Like the fabric is cut to size and the um, the floss is cut to size. So if I only put a few stitches in, I have like zero guilt because I have just as much guilt as the kit sitting there. And even if I never finish them, they're all kitted and they would go to, I mean, if I died tomorrow and they went to Goodwill, at least someone would have all the materials to finish it and they'd have the pattern with the fabric and all the floss, right? Um, cause I did ask my husband like what, um, what he would do with my cross stitch if I died tomorrow. And he said, I'd take it to Goodwill. I can't blame him. Okay. So this next one is bringing home the tree Scarlet house. And I love that. So super cute. I didn't, I didn't get much done on this. I just got 
this snowflake done right here. Sophie, don't be crabby. And um, this is a super pathetic start. This is another club kit, Pineberry Lane, Bountiful. It's the Quaint Country Ladies Club. If we can see it right here. That's super cute. And I think this was probably Saturday. Yeah. The six stitches. Um, Tara, I saw that she posted something on Instagram with similar, a similar start. And the dangers is like, you don't know where, where exactly, where exactly that is. <laughs> but such is life. Next is a beautiful kit from my dear friend, Tina. Tina, I love you so much. Thank you. Um, she gave me, this is like, when I say kit, I mean kit. I think she mentioned that this was like a retreat kit or something. And oh, she has so much stash. She says she's never going to get to it. So she passed this on to me and it's super de duper cute. Um, and it's actually both of these and it's got the fabric and the finishing supplies for all of it. So I didn't get too much of a start. I just got one flower done, but I was anxious to um, at least get some stitches in that because I think that is beautiful. And that is super cute. And it's on like this denim fabric. I can't wait to finish that. So I'm loving that. Put that away. And this one I have... Um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher. She's stitching the whole version. I, I think it was a market release. And then I saw, um, well, lots of people on Instagram and um, Chris. I don't have, I'm not going to say her last name, um, but she's like the fastest stitcher in the Midwest. And she model stitches for pretty much everyone. Um, if you've seen it, she's probably stitched it. And she was stitching this. We had, oh, after the Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat, we did a day retreat, which was super fun. Um, if anyone's interested, I think we're going to try and do that again. So we rented this place. It's called The Bonus Room in Lakeville. Um, the Bonus Room in Lakeville, Minnesota. Google it for directions. Um, it was super comfortable. It has a full kitchen, bathroom, and we just sat and stitched. And we literally, so we... Uh, we get it for the whole day, so like 6 a.m. to midnight. Um, you get, And we just sat there and stitched all day. We had a potluck, so we all brought something, so we ate all day. It was, it was awesome. The only thing we regretted is that it was one of the first really nice days of May in Minnesota, but none of us had any regrets because we had a great time hanging out. And I think I got there at like... I think I got there at like 9 30 10 or something like that and I left at about 9 30 so super fun thanks to the ladies uh that joined me I hope we can do that again that was super fun so anyways Chris was stitching um which I believe was a market release this full sampler and it's called the English Garden Sampler and it's by Samplers Not Forgotten and it is stunning but it's ginormous and there's a couple motifs in it that I really really love and then this so I got this from um, Teresa from kittenstitcher.com. Um, she has like the fastest shipping ever between her and um, Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. They are amazing. And um, came, it's a kit. And I believe I, it's limited availability. So if you like this, you should go get it now. It's, um, I know it looks really different from the picture. I really like it much better on the darker fabric, to be honest. I think the colors are much better. Um, I think, is this either Weeks? It looks like Weeks Tin Roof to me. And um, it comes as a kit, a finishing kit. And it comes with the backing fabric and everything. It's like $28 or something available on kittenstitcher.com. I'm not sure if she has any left. But I'm sure you can find someone, um, a, a few of these around somewhere. Um, but then the full sampler is beautiful. This is just like one small motif out of it, but that full sampler, she's a big one. So I wasn't ready to venture into that one yet. 
Okay, this next one is an epic, epic fail. This was another club kit, which um, this is another, this is the quaint country ladies. This is Wendy from Pineberry Lanes. And I love her patterns and I just think they're so cute. And I major league screwed up on this and um, not so in love with it. So first thing I did was notice that the fabric was super big. So I got the border stitch and then I trimmed it down because I was stitching it in hand. Um, only to realize that, yeah, I totally screwed it up. And you can see the border here has an extra, an extra little stitch in between the diamonds, which, um, yeah, I missed that part. So I had to adjust all the insides, which like that can really steal your thunder when you have to do that. I'm sorry. My hair is crazy. I literally just got done um, doing chores and playing in the dirt, so. But yeah, that can steal your thunder. And um, and then the floss, see where it says Noel? Mine, the piece I used was just super light, so you can't see it at all. And I don't know, my baby Jesus looks more like a baby Elvis. <sighs> I'd like to say I'm going to stitch that again. But, you know, when you have that kind of problem and... Um, it just like has bad juju for you. I think I'm just going to persevere and fudge this as much as I can and finish it. And um, I am going to take out that Noel though because that's just too light. You can't, you can't read it at all. And I might um, raise it up a few stitches and center it more in that area and then just call it done. And I think it'll be done. But you can see my... I made so many mistakes on this. It's embarrassing. I shouldn't even be showing it to you. Um, another finish was, I love this one so much. I can't even tell you. This one I stitched at um, the day retreat. This is what I worked on. So this is the Scarlet House and Be Merry and Bright. It's a club kit. I'm not sure if this is out yet. Um, it's a 2018 pattern, so I'm thinking not. I'm hoping it'll be available for everyone um, probably maybe in October. I don't know, but I hope you all get it because it's super adorable. Wait till you see it. You're going to die. How cute is that? Do you love it? Love this. So Kathy Hopperman has another pattern. It's one of, um, I think it's the one, you know, with the drum, that series she's got with the drum with the pillow. And she's got some vintage little ornaments too, kind of like shiny brights, because I know she's got a thing for shiny brights. And I want to um, stitch them both together and do like a little vignette with these. Wouldn't that be adorable? I love this. Love, love, love it. So it's it's finished. The only thing I have to do is um, the little snowflakes. And then, and then she's done. So cute. I love this. And then next was, um, this, these are actually no order. So the, the next one I'm going to show you is actually the first one I did for Mania, but, um, another Stacey Nash. This one actually was a start for Mania last year. No, was that last year? I started, yes, I started this either last year or the year before. Let's see. Oh, 2018. It must've been last year. Um, so this is part of the Animal Cracker series, Henrietta, super de duper cute. Um, I used all the called for thread and, um, actually I finished this one. She's so adorbs. And I used, um, all the called for threads, but I think it calls for Weeks Dye Works, um, Confederate Gray. And I used Weeks Dye Works Mocha. And I did, You, if you want to finish it the way that it's done in the pattern, you want to use Weeks Dye Works because it's a 35 count. And you know how Weeks is. And she's got a little template in there for you to sew it together. Um, so how cute is she? I do, So I changed um, her shoes to Little Mary Janes because they were supposed to be um, the, um, is it Cinnamon? Cinema, Cinnabon or something like that, which is the same as her dress. That was supposed to be her shoes. And I just thought she'd look cute in little Mary Janes. So she'll be fun. I want to do like a bunch of these. Like she's got 
the little bunny and then I was watching um um is it Amy loves toads she did the little slug and he's like that one originally didn't appeal to me until I watched her stitch it and it's pretty darn cute so I might have to do that one and then there's um the bunny I have both of the the snowman and the little snow lady and um, it's just a super cute series. And I saw someone post a picture of it, like a basket with all of the little animal crap. And it was just cute. So I'm totally going to have one of those. My next one was a kit that I picked up last year. Um, Deb, this another Deb and I. Um, we both picked this one up from Country Sampler. And it's called The Pin Keep by Kringle Company. And it's super cute. And it was a kit. It comes with all the velvet and everything. And this one was actually downstairs and we got it um, half off. Steel. And I had a finish on this too. I'm a little concerned. Um, I don't remember seeing anything in the directions, but this was my fabric. And yeah. Um, I'll just fudge it whatever way I need to, but... I mean, that's the most important part. It's super cute. I was, um, if you follow me on Instagram, perhaps you remember, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do about the fabric or about the floss because it was, it calls for one strand. Can you believe that's like, and let me, so this is, ba -ba -bum. I believe it's like a 32 count. This is so cute. Somebody said that they um, found it after I posted it. Oh, it's a 30 count Weeks Dye Works Tin Roof. Not very many colors. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so 30 count with one strand. Isn't that fantastic coverage? I don't have any regrets about using only one strand because most people when I did um, my Instagram survey said two and the direction said one and I was I didn't want to have to um, find additional floss for everything so I just went with it and I think it turned out great. I mean it is supposed to be primitive so but I think the coverage is actually pretty good. I was really surprised. So I'm looking forward to finishing that. And then I had, um, these were not, well, this was not a mania start, but it was a finish. I thought I'd show it to you because it's not part of my stitch nine either. I'm hoping to do a stitch nine update as well too, because I've finished like five projects. Um, so this was, uh, this is country cottage needleworks london and i stitched that for my daughter and sadly i just took three things in um and when i get those back in two weeks i will do um my stitch nine update then because uh what did i take because two out of the three of them were um part of my stitch nine challenge which i'm still going strong on i hope you guys are too um i haven't forgotten about it so yeah, but Michael's, so I've been taking my stuff into Michael's and they have now, they're not contracted with Aaron Brothers Framing and they do a fantastic job in my area framing, like fantastic. But I took this in and she said they couldn't frame it because it was under six inches with the height. I need to call and verify that I think with a manager. She was, she was like, super struggling measuring like I'm super nervous I need I need to call the manager tomorrow anyways and just verify some of the things that she said it's not perfect there but they do they do an actually great job the people who actually do the framing but they have like you know 16 year old kids there taking your orders and trying to measure and they have no idea what to do with needlework so that's kind of the frustrating part but um and then next is um this is a carriage house samplings mr and mrs abbott and daughters and this one um i'm stitching with michelle from the stripe rose we've been talking about doing this forever and a day um and then saddling with me kind of sucks because i either don't bother to start and never 
do anything or I go gung ho and by the time you start I'm already done like that's how I roll so so sailing with me super sucks just FYI if I ever I do because I do that sometimes on my Facebook group I'm like let's start a sale okay I'm starting like in five minutes and then I'll post a picture like two days later that hey I'm done and everybody's like what but um I have a bit of an obsessive compulsive personality <laughs> I guess and that's just what I do so these are super cute and my plan was always to stitch them together. I had this image of them, you know, being yay big and being really cute in a frame and in reality it's this big. Like and this even looks bigger than it is. Like it's super small. It's 4 by I want to say it's like 4 by 6 and a half or something like that. So uh, it wouldn't fit in a four by six frame. You would think that it would, and then it would just cut off a little bit of this tree and it would be perfect. But a four by six frame, you know, it's covers up a little bit of the border too. And so it literally hits the top of his head and the bottom of his feet and just makes it look kind of funny. And then a five by seven, because it's full coverage with a border around it, looked kind of dumb, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not one for mats. It's just not my thing. And so I took it in to be custom framed and she said they couldn't frame it. So I think I'll probably just take it into Stitchville because I know that Deb will do an amazing job. And um, the and then I'll, I'll probably call her tomorrow and see if they can put glass. I know a lot of people say no glass. I have everything framed that I have professionally framed. I have um, done with conservation glass because... People don't understand it, but when you live by a lot of gravel, like my whole driveway and my whole top of my driveway, like there's no pavement here. And the dust is unbelievable. I probably have to dust 10 times more than the average person would. I know I do because I used to live in town and I know. And it's um, crazy. We put these crazy filters on our furnace. and But, you know, every once in a while you want to open the windows, but the dust. I feel like the only person who understands me is Candy. Because Candy lives um, near gravel too. And people just, oh, and then the fields behind me. Like there's literally, you know, my immediate yard, which I have dug up right now. So that doesn't even count. But otherwise I have exposed, I'm surrounded by exposed dirt. Because um, nothing's been planted yet. And the wind, and it's just, it's a mess. People just don't understand. They're like, don't put glass in it. And I'm like, I have to. So I really want to put glass on this too. So what I did is I just, I could have done a much better job because um, it's definitely, I could have put more thought into kind of blending that together more and making that cloud, but it doesn't bother me. So um, if it bothers you, something to think about. And then I literally put zero thought into it and um, just kept stitching and adjusting kind of as I went. I did also convert all these colors to uh, Gloriana and Belsoi. Whatever was in my stash, I just kind of pulled as I went along. Actually, I take that back. The background um, are the called for two DMC floss. Um... So that's that. I did have a couple other starts that were um, stitching related, but not cross stitch. Uh, Buttermilk Basin, which we were fortunate enough that uh, Stacy West is amazing. And um, I called and asked her about it. And she opened up the shop for everyone that attended the retreat, like exclusively just for retreat attendees. And it was freaking amazing. It was, um, her shop is amazing anyway. So like when I was telling everybody you need to get there because it's amazing. <laughs> I walked in and was literally surrounded by half a dozen people thanking me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, don't thank me. Thanks Stacy. Because this is her, her baby and her brainchild. But um, it is an experience, so if you ever have the opportunity, I guess they're actually now opening, so her daughter was there, and I guess they're now opening, like, every, did she say Thursday and Friday? Um, like, every week, so if you have an opportunity, go, because it's amazing, 
and she has the cutest stuff and even and she has lots of great little kits but her shop is just super cute um so i got um this little um penny mat and i have it to fit in um it's a little carrier that i just set next to my stitching spot and so she's got all these little penny mats that fit into it um and it's just cute i actually haven't completely I just use plain backing because nobody's ever going to see the back. And I do need to um, finish um, using a buttonhole stitch around there. But otherwise, uh, the strawberries are on. Um, you may have seen this on my Instagram story if you follow me there. So everything is done except for that border. And it's just adorbs. Super adorable. And actually, this one was... Um, not a kit. I pulled from my uh, wool stash. And this is the pattern. It's uh, penny mats through the year. And this is June. And available on her website. Super cute. And then the next one is also, it's all put together, but I just haven't like sewn it together. So this is going to be the backing fabric and I have already sewn on the inner facing and I literally need to stuff it and sew it together and haven't been able to, to find time to do it. But, um, this, there's no picture of it on, um, on the pattern I got, but it is available on her website and it was like a shop hop kind of thing I think maybe from 2015 but um so just a buttonhole stitch it's very simple there's lots of YouTube I, people ask me to do YouTube video on instructions on how to buttonhole stitch they're already out there so just google how to buttonhole stitch uh, or wool applique and you'll find them um so that's that and it's super easy super easy and this will make just a cute little patriotic pillow and I'm all into um, the patriotic stitching right now. So I thought I'd just show you like a couple of the things that um, that I'm working on. And I just started, what day is it today? I started on Memorial Day because it was raining. I have no idea what day it is today. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but so this is is um i feel like i'm really heavy on the scarlet house which is all good uh patriotic shaker box set i actually originally saw this when mckenna was doing one of her live videos from the attic and so i called an order by the way i went to the attic it was freaking amazing the ladies there um carolyn i love you so glad i finally got to meet you in person um everyone there was just super super lovely um, beautiful shop and I have some haul that I will show you when I get my act together and do a longer video. I'm sorry about Sophie. Come here Sophie. Sophie, Sophie. She, um, it's probably like 11 o'clock right now so I'm sure she wants to go to bed. But So I'm right now, I'm working on this. I'm totally going to do this because I saw uh, Brenda Sampler Stitcher on Instagram posted some of her patriotic finishes and she had that done in his adorbs and so here is my start I mean this is just a small little um it's so cute these are mostly the call for colors it's sorry about that it's all the called for reds I switched out the blue to like really peely or something like that I don't I'm not sure but um and the light green was a swap. And I honestly, I just looked at the colors on the um, the picture here and then tried to match it. So, because I didn't, only because I didn't have a couple of the called for colors. How cute. I love this. So that's that. So I'm all into uh, patriotic stitching right now. So my plan is I'm going to page because... Patriotic stitching is my favorite. It is my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite. I love it. So I'm going to do that for the entire month of June. And then once 4th of July rolls around, I'm going to pull out my patriotic um, sampler, Plum Street sampler 
um, American Sampler. That's what it is. Plum Street Samplers American Sampler, which is one of my Stitch 9. Um, I'm going to pull that back out and I'm just going to, I have been back to kind of monogamous stitching, which I'm really enjoying. And that one is just like on my mind all the time. So I'm just going to dedicate the, um, the entire month of July to that. So I'm looking forward to that and getting it finished. It's a doozy. So we'll see if I can get it finished, uh, by the end of July. Not really sure. Sophie, enough. Um, but I have a few other things that I thought I would show you um, for Patriotic Stitches if you're interested. And um, this one was, this is a gift. This was a gift from Kim Parda. And um, it's super cute. So this is an Abbey Rose Designs. Uh, long may she wave series, life, liberty, happiness. I just noticed, Kim, did you see this is part two? So there's part one and I'm thinking this is a glimpse of part one in the background there because that chart is not included. Um, it's long may she wave. So I need to find that, but, um, this one is super cute and I have some, I've, I've shown them on a video, I think it was last year, that I actually, based on this series, how cute I thought it was, I painted some shaker boxes because they were, um, they were limited. And when I called the attic, I know Kim got one. Of course, she always gets them. But when I called, they were out. So I didn't get the shaker box. So I'm really looking forward to, and I've already kitted it up because this is going to be next. Um, so looking forward to that. So cute. I'm going to start out with this one here and then I need to go find part one. Then, oh, I love this one. Um, this is a with thy needle and thread Liberty house. Love this. I'm almost done with, um, birds of a feather. And then this is going to be next. Cause I feel like they're kind of similar with the tree house alphabet. So I'm going to finish one and then start this one. Um, I have my fabric selected. I just need to get my floss together. And um, you're going to find that these are going to be heavy on with thy needle and thread. So this is basket full of, is it basket of summertime? Love those. So cute. Love that. Love that house. I love it. Love it. Love it. So I'll be starting that one. Um, Summer in Baltimore. Love this one. I was actually kind of comparing it to winter and autumn. And um, I think it's going to be pretty close. If I stitch it over one, I can still. But I want a bigger box. But I was looking at the spring in Baltimore. And I think if you stitched that um, similar to the way the rest of the series are, I wonder if it would fit on um, a paper mache box too. Oh, she's such a baby. But, um, so that's my plan. I'm going to do that one. And farmyard parade. This just reminds me of kind of like a 4th of July parade. I love this and I love this pattern. And I was watching, um, Elizabeth from, um, she's vintage, vintage stitches right now. I haven't seen a video from her for a while. But she stitched it and um, she stitched it all on one piece and they were facing each other and it was adorable. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing. And what else? Oh, I, um, I have plans for this. So this, I'm going to stitch these. These are like... These are no joke. I mean, there, there's a lot of stitching involved with these. But I'd like to finish them, stitch them, and then do like just little pillows and throw them in like a dough bowl. Wouldn't that be cute? Just like have them all and throw them in a dough bowl, kind of rustic. That would be a really cute finish. And then um, I also have a Lady Liberty. This is a Blackbird design. This is also like... 
it is deceiving. There's quite a bit of stitching with this one too. So probably not something I'm going to get done like in a month, but I definitely want to like kit it up and give it a good start. And, um, next, um, I have already stitched this one here. So this is Sweet Land of Liberty. Um, this is the best book ever. If you don't have it, you need to have it. If you like patriotic stitching, because every single one of them is amazing. A uh, salute to Abigail. See, now this was another sale I'm supposed to be doing with Jen from Felicity Stitches. She started it like we were supposed to be doing it last year. She started it. I did not. Um, and I started this one and then scrapped my fabric and haven't started over. So I have to pick out some new fabric for that. But I did. Sophie, zip it. <laughs> She's such a pain. But I did. Um, I found some vintage buttons, Air Force buttons on eBay that are going to be fantastic with that. So, and then I totally want to do this. Like, I want to do everything. It's, um, and then the one thing that isn't shown is, that's the only one in there that isn't shown. How pretty is that? So that's, and hats off to Uncle Sam. I've already stitched it once. And, um, I did it for, um, an exchange on the Midwest Cross Stitchers page. And um, I did, we had a patriotic exchange and I stitched that for someone. And then um, I needed to stitch it for myself because it was super cute. And oh, and then last is this is one I have been wanting to stitch this for so long. I've seen it stitched a few times and it is the most, the most like patriotic thing to me ever. There's just something about it. I love, love, love. It's la di da, my country. This, this picture does not do it justice at all. This is actually, as soon as I finish the, um, the shaker box lid, I'm going to be starting this one. Um, it only takes four colors it's charted for NPS and DMC but it would be super easy to swap it out um those colors and it is just beyond gorgeous and I've seen it stitch and it is just like stunning so I can't wait to start that and um that's pretty much all I've got. I cannot believe I just rambled on for almost 54 minutes. And I thought that was going to be like a 20 minute video. So I should know better that I like to, I have the, the gift of gab. I, I realize that. <laughs> so, um, I do want to just mention, um, about the retreat. I mean, the retreat was amazing. I, um, I hope that you've seen some videos about it and, um, lots of stuff on Instagram. Uh, Priscilla and Chelsea were just amazing. I totally want to do that again sometime. It was just beyond fun, beyond fun. They were a hoot. Priscilla is awesome. Chelsea is the boss. Uh, she's running that show. Don't get it twisted. But um, they are just so lovely. And I enjoyed meeting them in person, which I knew that I would. And Cash is just, dang, that is the sweetest baby ever. He just rolls with it and um, is super chill. And I just really enjoyed um, spending some time with them and getting to know them. Um, and super fun. So um, you may have heard Kathy Haberman um, announce that she will be our next designer at the next May retreat. So, um, you know, as per usual and which is customary, uh, Anyone who attends the last retreat, I mean, I've attended a few retreats too, and it's the same thing. And if you go this year, then you get first dibs for next year. And um, and then there's usually a waiting list from there. I do the same thing. I'm totally open about it. Um, it's there for everyone to see. So you, because otherwise I get a bunch of messages, people wanting to know where they are on the waiting list all the time. So I just post the waiting list. You can see exactly where you are. You do have to join the Midwest um, Facebook group 
there's there's just like no working around that because that's the only way that um, I can manage with all the other stuff that I have going on. If you choose not to be on Facebook, that's your choice. But I've had lots of people join. Um, I mean, if you're in the witness protection program, you can always use an alias. Just saying. So, um, yeah. So if you want to get on there this fall, totally full. Um, it's been full for almost a year. It's going to be with Brenda Gervais. So super excited. So Brenda Gervais, we're going to be in Amana. It is going to be epic. And, and then next May, we'll have Kathy Haberman. And she does, if you've ever seen the stuff that she does in classes for finishing stuff, it's going to be fantastic. Um, so everyone in the group will get first dibs on that. And then I'll open up a waiting list. Um, if you're interested, it's the Midwest Cross Stitchers on Facebook. So if you just Google Midwest or just search Midwest Cross Stitchers on Facebook, you'll find the group. You can request a joint. Um, I will have a retreat video hopefully soon. I just need to, um, this was just the easiest thing for me to kind of get my feet wet again because I feel really, I feel totally out of the social media loop and, um, and, um, you know, when you have step away and you haven't done this for a long time, it's kind of hard to jump back in. But anyways, uh, that's all I've got. Oh, one more thing. Um, no. Okay. So anyways, uh, that's all I got. Um, I hope you enjoyed spending an hour with me. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, um, the people that have sent me messages asking me if I'm going to do floss tube again. It's just, it's just a challenge for me. To be honest, I really, really, really enjoyed the Instagram stories because uh, they're super quick and they're super easy. So if you want to know what I'm doing, you can follow me there. Um, I'm, I've changed my name to Farm Girl Loves Goats. Farm Girl Loves Goats, I believe it is. Um, because a lot of the people that follow me there are, um, not stitchers. A lot of them are farm related pages too. So, um, and I, to be honest, I was farm girl stitcher and I honestly, I don't post that much. I posted some stitching more than usual, but a lot of times I don't post a lot of stitching. It's more farm stuff. So of course, now that my video is done, she's finally fallen asleep. So. I hope you enjoyed spending the hour with me. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So keep on stitching and um, we'll check in shortly. Have a great evening. Bye.